Hi guys, in this video we're going to be going over representing chemical change. What you can expect in this video is balanced chemical equations. Uh, we'll be writing and balancing chemical equations and interpreting these equations. So what do you need to know for this? Uh, first you need to know what a chemical equation is. A chemical equation uses symbols to describe a chemical reaction. Uh, simply, uh, reactants are found on the left hand side and products on the right hand side. What we use to balance uh, equations is the law of conservation of mass. So basically it says the mass of a closed system of substances will remain constant regardless of the process acting inside. The matter can change form but not be, cannot be created or destroyed. What this actually means is that the total mass, atomic mass of the reactants is equal to the mass of the products. So that also implies that the total number of atoms on the reactant side must be equal to the total number of atoms of the products. So what does this mean and how, how does it apply to balancing of equations? The equation will balance if the number of atoms of each element in the reactant that's on the left hand side is equal to the same number of atoms of the product on the right hand side. So what we have to do to balance these equations? Once you have the right equation down, you just have to place coefficients in front of the reactants and the products until the number of atoms of each element are the same on both sides of the equation. We'll do a few examples now to illustrate this. So you can write this down and you can follow it. A solid zinc metal reacts with aqueous hydrochloric acid to form an aqueous solution of zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. You're required to write a balance equation for this. So first step to do will be to identify your reactants and your products. So reactants here is zinc metal and hydrochloric acid and your products will be zinc chloride and hydrogen gas as shown here. So then all you have to do is put it in equation form. Zinc and hydrochloric acid are reactants. Click on the left and uh, zinc chloride and hydrogen gas go on the right. And it gives an equation like this. So next step will be to write a balanced equation. So how you do that is you look at the number of um, uh, atoms of each of the elements. So zinc, we have one zinc on the side, one zinc on the side. Hydrogen, we have one hydrogen and two hydrogens here. We have one chloride and two chlorides. That means we need to have two hydrogens and two chlorides on the side to, to match the two, uh, two chlorides and two hydrogens on the side. So all you have to do is add a two in front of this. And that's it. And if you want, you can, if, if required, you can add the details of the balanced equation like it says that zinc um, this is actually should be a metal not a gas so that's a mistake but this should be a metal this is aqueous they say it's an aqueous solution aqueous and this is a gas we'll do one more example a little bit more in depth and it'll be shown nicely so basically in the body it says the sugar reacts with oxygen we breathe in to produce carbon dioxide water and energy so we are required to determine we are required to balance the equation so we have sugar reacts with oxygen, those are reactants, and they produce, so the products produce, being the keyword, carbon dioxide and water. So carbon dioxide is CO2, water H2O, oxygen is O2. So you write your reactant, first you write down your sugar reactants, you have sugar given to us, O2 oxygen, and products of carbon dioxide and water. Alright, so we have the equation, we just have to put it in the right form, there's sugar, oxygen, carbon dioxide, water, yeah product and then we can just, this is a nice way to keep track of everything so in the reactant side we have uh, six carbons 12 hydrogens uh, eight oxygens and on the right hand side we have one carbon two hydrogens and two and three oxygens so if you look at this we can see this on the left hand on the right hand side there's only uh, one carbon and there's two oxygens dependent so let's work on the carbons first so the number of carbons we need we need six carbons so we need to put a six in front of that that means you have six here and what it means is we have now six carbons so the carbons are sorted out we also have we have 12 oxygens and we still have two hydrogens 12 hydrogens there and the reactant side and eight oxygens here. so the carbon is sorted out next step let's look at let's look at the we did the carbon let's look at hydrogen next so hydrogen is next. We can see uh, we need to get from from six. We need to get from two. We need to get to twelve. So we look at the hydrogens here. So if you put a six in front, we're going to get twelve. If you do that, then we have now. If you add the six in front of that, we have six carbon, six carbon, twelve hydrogen, twelve hydrogen. The last step would be to balance the oxygens. So how would you balance the oxygen? You have eighteen here, right? 
we already have six here that means we have we don't we only have to worry about this one oxygen here if you put what number can we put in front of it to get a total of 18 we already have six six plus 12 gives 18 so if you put a six here we have the two oxygens you multiply and then you will get a total of then you get the right answer so this is the balanced equation we have the original sugar six oxygens and then six carbon dioxide six water molecules and, and as you can see the equation is balanced that's pretty much how you do this sort of equation you just that's how you balance equations we went through it a little quickly because it's grade 10 work and you should know this by now uh, the key here will just be to write down your reactants and your products know how oxygen is O2 hydrogen is H2 carbon dioxide know how uh, the, the this uh, formulas are written and um, yeah that's pretty much it okay thanks guys